the Lions, we know, don't have a great track record at the MCG in recent years, but their record at Marvel hasn't been too bad. Yeah, they were, they were fantastic, I thought. You know, they didn't put it on the scoreboard early because St Kilda dropped so many numbers back behind the ball, but it was just repeat entry after repeat entry. Harris Andrews behind the ball was sensational. Hipwood played a yeah. fan, he, an awesome game, kicking four goals as well. There was a level of intensity yeah. about them, and, and he was symptomatic of that. I thought Hipwood pr- played with that, and Harris Andrews, who can be laconic, brought great effort. Seven intercept marks in the first half and nine for the game. And they defended the ground so well. It was like the Saints could not penetrate past the logos on the wing. And the tough decision they made as a club the previous week with Rich and Gunston coming out, Fletcher and Loman then appearing and emerging as good players in that round. There's a youth component to this now, which mm. they haven't had, and I think it's pretty compelling. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think they can still win the Premiership, but a lot comes down to Danaher and, more importantly, Hipwood. I think Hipwood is the key. Now, he was brilliant the other night, but I'm going to take you back, and he hasn't played well against good sides this year. This is a few weeks ago against Adelaide. He had three possessions on this night. Now, I think Hipwood's aggression on this day wasn't there. It wasn't an AFL standard. And have a look at him here. You tell me that's aggression when you watched highlights of him the other night. He's just not giving anything the other night. And this is why he had three disposals. Didn't kick a goal in this game, Eric Hipwood. Here he is again at the side of the pack, not really pushing hard and then just floating around. And this is symptomatic of what he does. He's up, he's down, but he has so much talent. And this is the last slide of this one. This is Eric Hipwood coming here, trying to have have a go at the ball. Ran straight past it. Now, let's go back to the other night and I saw a completely different player and somebody that can potentially take them to a premiership. Now, this is Eric Hipwood the other night. This is him in full flight when he's playing aggressive football. So these are just so different to the game against Adelaide. He got their side started. He got them going. Even this one here. That's the same ball we just saw against Adelaide. It's a 50-50 footy. He body lines it, gets the football to the top of the square. They get a goal out of that. This is the Eric Hipwood that can take them to a premiership. Again, Eric Hipwood comes up at the football hard, picks it up. This is what Brisbane want to see. This is what Brisbane want to see. And he does it too often, but then he goes back to that Adelaide. So, again, that's what you need to see from Eric Hipwood. Um, am I wrong? Am I right? Am I too hard on him taking him back to Adelaide? Because he can do the job. Spot on, Brandon. Yeah, his last month has been sensational. Yeah. Um, can I ask you about St Kilda? Right? I want to put the ladder up now. And this is the, uh, the midfield, if you like, from fifth down to uh, effectively, what, 14th. Um, does St Kilda, right, starting with you, Damo, does St Kilda make the finals? I say no, TJ. I'm, I'm really worried about them. The 8-6 and six score line and, and, and the manner in which the losses are coming now, I think they've got no tricks to, to play. And I think it's going to be a real grind now for them to, to hold on. Who else comes into the eight? Well, I just like the fact that there's last year's grand finalists out of it, and that's inclusive of Sydney with what they did against West Coast yesterday. You've also got Richmond, which has won flags in this current era. So I, I think two, maybe even all three of those can still make a run. When you're making assessments like this, with this year you need to look at who you've got coming up and what your draw is like. So the Saints have still got West Coast this week, they've got North, they've got Gold Coast and Hawthorne. Mm. So you give them those four, which gets them to 12. So just on the back of the fact that their draw is pretty easy, they probably get there. Will they deserve to be there? Are they in the best eight teams in the comp? Probably not. I'm just copying Kane, TJ, because look at the board that he's done. Uh, can you hold that up, Kano? So Kano, that's the, uh, we can get that up. That is what he's done. So he's colour-coded it, wins, losses, who they've got to come next. And uh, so what, whatever he says, I'm, I'm backing. You've four co- you got green, yellow, green? orange and pink. Well, the green is a draw. Yeah. The pink is the buy. Yeah. And yellow is a win and orange is a loss. I think you need to use more. So who else are a chance? But you said St Kilda have got a yeah, good run. Well, you like the Crows run too, don't you? I like, I like Richmond's run because they've, they've got Sydney at the MCG. They've got West Coast to come and they've still got North. Um, and Adelaide have got a pretty good draw as well. So And the Bombers and the still Bombers. have North and West Coast to come as well. Right, OK then. Um... Uh, what else did you want to talk about? Uh, Mitch Owens? Mitch Owens, yeah, I do. I just think Ross has got a decision to make on what, what I think is one of his most valuable assets. Not plane yet. If not, I don't want to see him in the ruck anymore because this was hard to watch on, on Friday night. Now, you've got Caminiti who can do the ruck work if you need him to do the ruck work because I think you're putting this young man who we have all been captivated by at risk of doing this. So this, this is Joe Danaher. We'll pause this one. Bang. That knee into his ribs or his kidney area is too risky to be putting him there. So just play him as a midfielder or play him in the role that he's been so good at, and that is a high half forward. 
Damo, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at what the umpire thought was a, uh, a bad tackle on the night in question. Liam Stocker on Eric Kipwood. And again, Liam Stocker's clearly benefited here from, from Hipwood effectively cocking his neck, so to speak, and, and not allowing it to hit the ground. And had it, I've got no doubt there would have been a, a one or two or even three match suspension attached to that, but, but he wasn't. And again, the MRL, MRO threw that particular issue out, as it did yesterday also, too, with the, uh, the Max King hit on Ryan Lester. I don't know why umpire. I'm all for umpires, but I don't know why they make reports in game now because there's yeah. no point. They're yeah. always reviewed anyway. King and, and was reported as well. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's thrown out. It's thrown Sorry. out. Yeah. yeah. It's almost yeah. like cricket umpires. Don't worry about making a decision. Just go straight up mm. to the video.